Yes, yeah, Sunday. What's up, everybody? Sunday evening edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. I hope everybody had an amazing, amazing weekend, and more importantly, a great Mother's Day. I actually spent the day with uh, my beautiful wife, the mother of my three wonderful children, and so we normally do the Daily Market Commentary on Monday morning because we have a live trade room on Sunday night, but... We're delaying the live trade room by an evening so I can spend some time with the family and we will do our live trade room tomorrow and so we're getting an early edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I will not have a Daily Market Commentary out tomorrow morning. This will be the one for tonight as well as tomorrow. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. So the S&P this, this evening, we are up about eight and a half points, a little bit of a gap up right into a supply area. So we can see this little drop base, very strong move away. Now this is you know, in the context of a bigger picture upward trend, um, and our bigger picture upward trend, our four hour trend is to the upside, coming into four hour supply, but let's talk about this four hour supply. So this four hour supply, which I'm speaking of right here, is a fresh area, meaning this is the first time we've returned to this area, but there's two things that really bother me about shorting at this area. Number one, is that I have some basing right here just before the, the area, which makes it that much weaker. The second thing that I dislike about the area is that it's a bit of a retest of this area over here to the left. And so with that, it makes me very cautious about getting into this, this hourly supply zone. And so I think that that probably is not gonna make sense for most people when you're looking at one of these positions. So, uh, our our Friday, uh, our Friday trade, we got a little bit of a move back in, about a two to one move away, and then it came a little bit under. So it could have been a stop out for you depending on your trade style, but I think that there is still gonna be an opportunity for a retracement and a pullback. So if I slide this to the 15 minute chart, um, this was the opening of today. Now we actually gapped down to start our session uh, and immediately traded higher. So when I look at that, that is a, that's a, you know, Sometimes you'd say gap and go, right? Meaning if I get lower than the first candle's low. But we gapped down and then traded into this little wick over wick area here. I love wick over wick levels. Um, so now what I'm going to do is put a little area right in here on the 15 minute time period. We could get a retest of this area in the overnight. Now, one of the things I would also say is tomorrow morning when you wake up, take a look at this level for a... Um, for a potential um, reversal right around the 2 a.m. So keep an eye on whatever our 2 a.m. reversal is tomorrow morning to see where might we get another turning point and another opportunity to get long. Because that's really what we're looking for right now are long opportunities. Now we may get a bit of a pullback and there's some short term trade there for the overnight. But right now that's the, the area that I'm looking for the reversal. In the NQ, we are actually coming up to what was our four hour potential breakout level. Um, we've talked about this level because we had a little bit of basing here in the past. We've come up to it again, we're basing in front of it. We had a lot of people take some of our trades uh, from last week on some of these NQ breakouts and reversals, and they were very effective. Now we did get one little trade into this level last week. Uh, on Friday, and we did get a nice little two to one, almost a three to one move out of that level uh, before price came back down into it and broke through it. So now looking at this, the same kind of 15 minute area exists right here in the in the NQ as it does in the ES. Now I would say in the overnight Globex session, the NQ is probably gonna be a better trade opportunity than the, than the ES, just simply because it has a an overall um, higher relative strength to one another. The NQ is slightly higher when it comes to a relative strength picture. So there's our, our NQ level. Now, if we continue to get basing below this 92.75, I think you do still have an upside breakout potential. And we can see that on the daily chart, the NQ is within, let me see here, um, we're within, from current price to the high, we're within about, 5% of, of getting back to our all-time highs in the NASDAQ. So the market has been very resilient off of those monthly demand areas, continuing its rally higher. Um, if we get a bit of a pullback uh, over the next couple of days, I would look to this area here 
as probably the most likely place to get long again, which is right around the 9,000 area. So we'll keep an eye on that one throughout our daily commentaries throughout the week. Let's take a look real quick. I know I don't normally look at the Russell in the daily market commentary, but I do want to take a look at the Russell today. Let me get rid of some of these older lines so that I can give you some more fresh analysis. We normally look at the, at the Russell in the live trade rooms, but not necessarily in the daily market commentary. So I'm going to remove some of those areas and pull up the four-hour rut. So in our four-hour rut, now the Russell did have a pretty big sell-off. Um, and it's, it's been climbing back. It's not quite to that high where the other markets are. So uh, you do technically still have an upward trend. But when looking at this one, um, I can see that we have the hourly supply is very clean up here. So if you are more of a bear and you do want to try a bearish trade, I think that the Russell is your opportunity on the bearish side. And it's this level right up in here. Um, if you're more of a bear, I am not a perma bear. I'm, I'm going to stick to what the big picture trend is telling me. And right now it's giving me more of a bullish sentiment. Let's move over and take a look at crude oil. Um, so in crude on our front month contract, very sideways throughout the last week, hovering around 24. I've been analyzing the September contract uh, over the last couple of days, still very sideways. And so a lot of people are looking at that as a an iron condor opportunity. And an iron condor opportunity would be to find a range where it can stay. So um, I, think that, I think that that's not a bad idea so long as you keep your wings outside of some of these areas of supply and demand. Um, and, you're, and you keep your condor wide enough so that you can be safe. Uh, right now, we're in between an area of resistance and support. I wouldn't call those supply and demand, and the reason for that is because if you call this a supply zone, well, it's already a, it's a retest of this area here. If you call this a demand zone, it's a retest of this area here. I would call the more of those of support and resistance at this point, which are still banding the price between 27.30 and 30.05. Um, and so if you wanted to go outside of there for a condor, you're probably okay. But that's where I would look for my reversals. Next, look at it, gold. So in our gold markets, now we did have this gold trade set up last week on this wick over wick, uh, not the greatest level as price just blew right through that area, rallied back up, and then it's been selling off ever since. Now we are coming into this area down here. When I look at the four hour chart, my four hour chart is, is very sideways as well. So with that sideways price action, I'm a little bit hesitant to take the uh, to take that level get this back to I went a little too close there we go let me just reset this one um, with that with that chart being a four hour level it gives me a little bit more concern about about coming back into this hourly trade now my other problem with coming into this hourly level is that we're basing sideways in front of this zone and sideways basing in front of the zone reduces the probability of success. So I think that I would also, I'd be more apt to look for a potential breakdown, although that trade isn't set up yet either. So let's revisit this one tomorrow morning after we see what the London market does. All right, moving over to bonds and currency. So in our ZN, we did finally, finally last week get some movement in our bond markets and we caught a nice demand zone trade um, off the live trade room. The second time back into the level, we were not as healthily rewarded as price came really close to the level and then moved away, which caused us to move us to a confirmation. And then we came into the level, gave us a little bounce out, um, and then just popped right through for a small stop out. So that was unfortunately a, uh, a reversal trade that didn't hold true. Now on our four hour chart, um, we are still in a sideways price price movement. I thought we were going to get a better move away from it. We finally touched, you know, we had a little 15 minute level, uh, this one here that we bounced down into and moved away. Uh, but we're still in our four hour trend. So you've got a little bit of an hourly level here to lean on um, if we come back into there. But it's it's a little wick over wick below a above just this little pivot area. So it's not too bad. Um, we do have a little supply area up here that I think is maybe worth visiting. Uh, if, if price comes into here, uh, I think this supply area that's right there, that's an unbalanced, well, actually I'll take this one that's a little higher. It's more of a balanced wick over wick right here um, and probably a slightly better time of day that might be worth 
uh, reviewing later. Looking at the Aussie, so our Aussie position, we had an Aussie demand area, so price came um, into really close to this level and we've rallied away from there. This level I think still is pretty strong. I'm gonna put a breakout, potential breakout line right in here. If price breaks out above there, I think you've got a breakout trade and a breakout candidate. Uh, in the Euro, we had a Euro setup here. We got one touch, two touch, and then we got no basing. So this is not a false breakout. Those of you that trade breakout trades understand that this is not a false breakout because we did not get basing before the level. That is the key. Gotta follow the rules, and if the rules say there's no basing, bada bing, there's no basing. So um, when I'm looking at this, I need to see basing before the zone. Now we did get a nice level off of this little, this little zone right here, um, which is what caused this big price rally up. I will say that you could get a move down from here actually if we get basing below this area. Um, on a four hour chart, now the reason we're a little sideways is because the dollar is also a little sideways, so our currencies are a little bit indecisive in general. Uh, looking at the Canadian dollar, so our Canadian dollar, our upside momentum is starting to wane as we're coming into this area of supply up above. So when I move this over to say the 15 minute chart, uh, let's go back a little bit more in time. So on a 15 minute time period, if I look further to the left, you do have a lot of this area here. My fear with that is that it's very, very, we'll call it wicky. There's lots of wicks in here that I need to pay attention to. So. Um, but but it is still enough for me to say okay well there's some supply here now that supply there makes a breakout right here less likely so i would say that your better probability now is to look for a decent reversal trade back to a quality area and i think that you've got a zone um back in here this pivot is probably your best level but none of these are are, are going to be extremely quality zones, so it may just be better off holding off on these positions. All right, last couple of markets that we're looking at. So uh, moving over to Great British Pound as well as the Japanese Yen, and uh, we'll also take a look at natural gas, and I'm going to look at soy this evening as well. We've got a number of a number of people that trade soy, so I will I'll put soy into uh, into my list of things that I'm going to look at. So starting first with natural gas, we had a really nice little demand area on the gap fill level um, from last week. Price came into the level. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get a huge move away. Um, it was a perfectly, perfectly positioned level. We got a nice touch close to it. We came into it again, um, and then it just kind of fell through. Now, this sets up for a really nice breakdown. So anybody who caught that breakdown trade uh, did very well with that position. Now um, we are looking, I think, at another potential breakdown below this area right here, uh, this 813 area. If I look at the four hour chart, not the 30 minute, if I look at the four hour chart, we see that our four hour trend is most considerably down. And so we do have a little wick over wick area down here to contend with, but I think that our big picture trend is actually going to continue to drive us down into this 17 area. Uh, looking at the Great British Pound, so in our Great British Pound position, we had a really nice reversal off of this last week. For those of you that were able to catch that one, you got a really nice move. However, um, we we then uh, converted that to a confirmation entry, and this is why we do confirmation entries. So no entry on that trade uh, as it popped right through it, but it did set up this big expanded range candle, which we anticipate would eventually get retraced. And the origin of that move does become a demand area. So look for a potential reversal in that zone. Japanese yen really coming down off of our uh, off of this high down up here. So I'm going to look for the most obvious level right now, although it might be a bit too obvious um, for some people's likings. I'm actually uh, okay with it right in here. Now the only downside to this is, is the time of day. Now this is the market close time of day as well as Globex open. So I think you may be all right with that level. Uh, and then soybeans. I'm gonna look at soy for a moment because we've been looking at soy in our live trade room a lot. Some of our, some of our best members and best traders are using soy. Uh, and so in looking at soy, we are seeing that on our four hour chart, we have, we've now created an upward trend. On our one hour chart, we were basing here before the level, which takes this level completely out of play. Um, and now we've gapped up 
on our weekend move. We've gapped up. We've gapped up in an upward trending direction. So this does set up for a gap and go play if we get higher than the first candle's high, stop goes below the first candle's low, it does set up for a potential gap and go play. So those are our levels for this evening. Like I said, I know we don't normally do um, Sunday evening DMCs, but because of uh, you know spending some time with the family on a Mother's Day, we are doing a Sunday evening edition. If you guys have any questions at all, please uh, send us an email, support at tradersarmy.com. I appreciate you so much, and I will talk to you all soon. Have a great day. See ya.